take several different forms in some of our sales. Like the, the customer is going to communicate things to us. Um, a lot of our job is learning to communicate things to the customer in the most efficient way possible. So this training we're going to focus on how we communicate with the customer. Um, and so the ways that we communicate, there's basically three different ways. First of all, um, our body language. Second is our metaverbal communication, which is like the pitch, our volume, the speed with which we speak, those aspects of it. And last, we have our verbal communication. So what's interesting about this is when you break it down, body language actually accounts for 55% of what you're communicating to the customer. Um, obviously, that's like the biggest chunk of this. So not what you say, but how you say it is, is the most important thing. Metaverbal communication, this volume, pitch, um, speed, that aspect of it accounts for 38% of your total communication, which means what's actually what you're actually saying is a mere 7%. So it's important, obviously, to make sure that you're saying the right thing, but really more important in, in making sales is learning how to have the best body language and metaverbal communication, because that's what makes the biggest difference on the doors. So, um, in the words of Hitch, everyone here has probably seen Hitch, is like 90% of what you're saying ain't coming out of your mouth. Um, that's pretty much true. So, the first aspect of this is body language. So, we're gonna do a couple little things here. First of all, there's space zones. What space zones are, is that's you know, the spacing between us and the customer. So I want, oh, this is my favorite, come here, Brent, I get to get close to you again. I'm excited about this. So your space zones, first is your intimate zone, and that's um, it's right in here. Mm -hmm. And I tend to only be in people's intimate zones if I'm going to kiss them. So I'm gonna get out of Brent's <laughs> intimate zone. So that's very close, and you're never gonna need that zone with the customer. Um, the joke last time, unless you're selling something other than pest control. So, what's it buying? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Whatever's moving, you know. So your, your personal zone is 18 to 48 inches. And this is um, when you're pretty cozy with the customer. You're going to be from like about here uh, to about here. This is their personal zone. This is you're in their space when you're in the personal zone. Next you have the social zone, which is about from here to, you know, let's say back here. And then anything really further back than that is called the public, public zone. So as salesmen, where we typically start is in the social zone. When I knock on a door, um, say Brent is the door, I knock. I, run, I don't just like stand right here in the personal zone. So when they open the door, I'm like, oh, hey, I'm right here in your face. you know. So you back out to the social zone, take a few steps back, and then when the customer opens the door and asks you why you're there, what's going on, how can I help you, whatever, then you go ahead and you can step into the personal zone. Hey, just really quick, hand them something, a, a, like a bug sheet, whatever. And that's how you can kind of work your way into the personal zone, but you should typically start in the social zone. So that's kind of your, your zones. Um, there's a YouTube video, I think we're going to skip it this time, uh, but it's just from Mad TV. If anyone's ever seen like, the video of Darrell, and he's just like up in the girl's face, he's like, work that up, dude. But it's just how he gets like right up next to this girl, it makes her very uncomfortable. That's why we want to we wanna control our spacing because even if we're like three or four feet away from some people, if we haven't really like earned our way into the personal zone, it's gonna make that customer feel uncomfortable. So the zoning really helps us to like uh, make the customer feel comfortable, make them feel non-threatened. So next we have the position. Um, so our position with the customer is really important aspect of body language. So typically, um, stand up really quick, Jeremy. If I'm gonna walk up to Jeremy and I'm gonna be like this, what is this communicating to you guys? I'm gonna be down. Yeah, right? I know. I'm not, but what if I walk up to him like this? Oh, all of it? You don't necessarily look scared, you just, you just don't look like you're gonna attack him right away. Like, if I'm gonna punch him, it's gonna be a long reach over my shoulder. No, so that's kind of like the same principle with the body language, uh, with the position here. You don't wanna be squared face to face with the customer, just, just you know, military style, ready to own them. What you wanna do, is when you're facing your customer, you want to face away from them and then have your head turned towards them. So you can have your body angled like this or like straight up away from them and then looking over your shoulder. But the principle is to just not square up with the customer because that's going to make them feel like you're in a confrontational mode. So that's the first one. The second one is don't block the sidewalk. So say this is the sidewalk right here and this is the door right here. Instead of standing square in the middle of it, what you kind of want to do is step to the side be kind of out of the way. 
so the customer can look past you. And what that communicates to them subconsciously is that they have options. If you're right in the middle of it, like their only option is to talk with you, and people do not like being forced to do things. Um, it's like you know when your mom tells you you can't see your girlfriend, what's the first thing you want to do? You want to sneak out and go see your girlfriend, right? So by, by limiting the person, by blocking their options, um, by making them feel like they don't have an option, you're kind of turning them off to you already from the get-go. So you should kind of step off to the side, position yourself so that they feel like they have an option. The, by the way, these are all just like subconscious things that are going to help you just communicate to the customer, help them get in the best position to buy, to feel comfortable, and that way they can actually talk with you. Because if you don't get them comfortable, you're not even going to be able to have a conversation. So the last thing is just be careful not to get stuck behind um, the door. So when I walk up to a door, I automatically like pre-plan. I look at the door, the door opens in, but the screen door opens out. The screen door opens out from this side, which means I want to be on this side so I don't get trapped behind the screen door I'm looking like a goofball. You don't want to be talking through the screen door. That makes sense. Um, so that's pretty much it for position. So last, <coughs> um, I joke with Joe about this one a lot. Um, it's, or sorry, second, next we have illustrators. What's interesting about these illustrators is it's kind of painting a picture with your hands. And so I think most of you guys at this point have seen like when we explain that we're going to treat the foundation of the home, we kind of walk over to the foundation of the house and we say, you know, we're going to treat three feet up and three feet out all the way around the foundation. You kind of paint a picture with your hands. Joe's really good at this because he gets very flamboyant. During the summer, he talks more with his hands than anybody else I know. And like seriously, just he's all over the place. So I want him to come up and kind of Got demonstrate to you guys how he uses <laughs> illustrators and his pitch and how the illustrators, how like he, he does it during the summer essentially. Okay. All right, so I'll explain a few pieces of the service and how I explain them. You guys can add in whatever you want. So every time I explain the base spray of the home, I don't just say that we're gonna spray up and spray back. I always get down. It, it, it immediately directs their attention down to the ground. So you squat down, you can stay in this position for forever. Sometimes it's fun to fool around with the customers and see how long you can stay down here talking to them, even if you can fill out the contract. There was a guy last year with us in New Jersey named Yun Suo Kai. We call him just Asian boy. <laughs> Anyways, he, at first, he was one of the most awkward salesmen I've ever met. But he adapts to these principles of body language, metaverbal, verbal communication so well that he became a perfectionist. He would do this, he would explain this part of the service like this. He'd be like, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this base spray three feet high and three feet far. And he'd stay on his knee and he described the rest of his pitch, his service, everything, everything else on his knee like this. At the guy's front doorstep or in the lawn or wherever it was. It was so funny to see and I was, I was amazed by it because he could stay down the whole time and the customer was like, has more attention with him because he's doing such a weird thing being on one knee, it's like he's trying to pose or something like that. So anyways, three feet high, three feet out, out all around the base of the house and I love using my hands. Yeah, it might be flamboyant but in all reality, it makes things look way prettier. So for instance, if I see a crack down here like this, I describe it like, so what these ants like to do is they like to get inside of these cracks and they dig their way up and then they spread throughout the walls of the home. That right there paints a way better picture than, so what the ants are gonna do is they're gonna creep inside and then spread throughout the walls of the home. That's a terrible way of explaining it. Don't let us catch you explaining it that way or Tyler would be very upset because you didn't pay attention to his, to his train. That's yeah, so terrible. Um, couple other pieces. When you're describing the eave sweep, you talk about the actual eave sweeper first, how it extends about 15 to 20 feet. There's about a pom-pom brush looking thing on the end. We put a product on the end. Once we extend it up, we scrub into the corners of the home, around the windows, around the doors. We put this product to make sure none of those bugs will enter in in all these different areas. You see all these cracks around here? Bugs can enter in at, every, at any time. And when you're doing this, don't just stay in one place. A big thing we push with our region especially, and I know throughout the company, is walking your customer around the house. When you get your customer involved in the body language, it takes it to a whole new level. They start paying attention to you, not just with their ears, but with the other senses that they have. With the smells that they go around the house, with their sight, with the feel, with the touch, with everything. Uh, let's see. When you're explaining the interior treatment of the home, uh, 
I like the idea of obviously squatting down. And when you're talking about the cabinets, you paint them the picture. So you have your sink that's up here, and then your cabinet, what you do is you open up your cabinet, and you have that J pipe. You know that J pipe goes right into the back of the wall, right? And you nod your head and look, see, Jeremy's already nodding his head. Oh yeah, yeah, right, exactly. This little disc right there, you pull off. What we do is we put a product back there and around that pipe area, what that'll do is it'll stick to the ants and to those areas, and they'll take it back to their nest and kill off all the nesting areas. Sometimes we don't know where the nesting areas are exactly, so this creates a perfect opportunity for us to clear out everything from within the wall of this. A big thing I like to do when I'm on the doors of this is it creates that protective barrier so when those ants go marching one by one, they hit a wall and they're not able to get past. And I, I like doing this a lot. It just describes it pretty perfectly. Uh, then the last thing that we do, and Logan actually does this pretty well on the doors, is when you're describing the granulation, if you have a hat, take your hat off, you pretend like it's what you're using for the granulation. Then you drop something on the ground and you say, okay, pretend like this is your house right here. You drop your iPad and you describe the whole perimeter of the house. It creates an extra 10 to 15 foot barrier all the way around the perimeter of the house and then any spot treatment that you need. And so if you guys notice, you guys will notice this now for the rest of your lives whenever I'm talking, I use my hands all the time. And it's from, well, I started doing it in the mission I bet, but it's definitely from sales. But it definitely takes you to a whole new level. Sorry, that took a while. Nope, that's good, thank you. Please take it for one second. Good. <laughs> um, so Joe's like, his, seriously, his hand motions are what makes him like such a convincing salesman. When you watch him on the doors, uh, if you're just like looking at him and not listening to what he's saying, it kind of looks awkward, but if you're listening to what he's saying, it totally makes perfect sense that he, why he's using his hands that much. And customers like it, because you're like, oh, oh, okay, so you're not getting them on the front of the house, but you're seeing them on the back of the house, is that right? And he like, this is his hand motion, like, you're seeing on the back of the house. Um, he kind of is like the your fire thing, but it like really helps comfort, like customers feel listened to and feel like at ease. I think it works well. So next we have mirroring. And what you do when you're mirroring is you kind of imitate the customer's body language. And the reason that you do this is because the customer, when you approach them, they could be on this level of like um, intensity, and you could be here. And so what you want to do is get on the same plane as the customer. Kind of, it kind of subconsciously demonstrates that you are listening to them, that you're aware of their needs. So when you, when you mirror somebody, it kind of seems goofy. You're like, I'm straight up imitating everything they do. Like, are they going to notice that? Most people don't notice it consciously, but subconsciously what it says to them is, I'm sympathetic with you. Um, I want to be on the same plane as you. I want to better understand you from your position. And so that helps people actually feel more comfortable. So what we have seen is mirroring. So if I'm talking to Joe and he's the customer and he's with his hands on his hips like that, I'd be like, yeah, just, you know, we've just been out here in the area just taking care of a few of your neighbors down the road. Um, they're just seeing a few of those little ants, that kind of thing. It's nothing real crazy. Um, obviously, you guys have probably, you know, seen, you've lived here for a long time. You probably see those ants every summer, right? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so, and then you, you can go ahead and like hand him a fly or something, but you kind of just casually, when he folds his arms, kind of fold your arms. You still need your hands to talk and paint a picture. If he, my favorite with, to do with customers, and I do this all the time, is they like to lean against their doorposts. When they lean against their doorposts, I look for a column right behind me, and I just lean against the column on the porch. And it just helps people feel like you are, you're on their level. Another big thing about that too is if a customer is sitting down on the porch and you're gonna walk up to a lot of them like that, once you hand them something, I love squatting down right next to them and explaining to them because you're on the same level. You're not talking down to them at all. And this is way, it's a way bigger deal than you guys think. This type of communication, this type of body language is huge. If you're talking down to someone, no one likes that. No one likes to be looking up the entire time. Yep. So, um, that, like what Joe was saying, like, I would walk up to a customer and if they were sitting with a chair next to them, I'd be like, hey, how's it going? Just the bug guy here real quick and then I'd just, not, you don't ask, you just sit down and like, they feel comfortable, it's normal. So it works really well. Thanks, Joe. Um, I don't know, he mentioned this one, but when you, want, when you ask a question that you want the customer to agree with, you just kind of casually start nodding. And that, that just kind of speaks to people subconscious. Like everybody, when you're seeing something, somebody nodding, you almost automatically start nodding with them. So like I did last time, I look at Jeremy, I'm like, hey, are you pretty happy to be here today? His head starts nodding like before he has an opportunity to even think about it and be like, wait, no, no, I'm not happy to be here today. <laughs> like, it works really well. And typically, I mean, you're not asking them like, hey, can I have your soul? You're asking them something that's very basic. So getting them to agree is a pretty, pretty simple thing. Like, 
Hey, a lot of the neighbors have been seeing those little ants. Are you guys seeing those on the inside or just still out here on the outside? And you just nod. It doesn't matter which one of those two questions they agree with. Either way, they're going to agree, yeah, I, I see the ants on the inside. Or, uh, not on the inside, but I, I do see them on the outside. Either way, they're going to be agreeing with you, and it gets, their, it gets them subconsciously kind of in an agreeable mode. So that's an important one. So the last one for this body language is eye contact. And eye contact is really, really big. The reason it's red and with three exclamation points is because it's very important, and it's something that sales reps will struggle with early on. Um, so typically with eye contact, when you approach the customer and you start talking with that customer, sorry Kevin, I'm gonna like stare at you for a second, you wanna look at the customer and just be like, hey, just really fast, my name is Tyler, I'm out here with Terminix. We're just gonna be taking care of a few of your neighbors out here down the block. Um, I don't know if you know Kevin that lives down, sorry, you are Kevin. There's another Kevin that lives down the block, or if you know Jake down there. We're gonna be taking care of their homes. What they're starting to see are these wasp nests up here in the eaves. You wanna keep eye contact unless you're directing their vision somewhere. So when I'm saying, hey, um, we're actually be treating Kevin's house down the block, you, uh, that's when I turn and look, and it tells their eyes, like, go ahead and follow me, and then I come back to their eyes, and then when I direct them to the ease, that's when I look away. But you basically shouldn't break eye contact unless you're intentionally directing them. So if they ask you a question and you're thinking, like, it's tempting to be like, uh, or uh, like, you basically want to look them in the eyes and be like, you know, kind of like think about your response, take a second, but keep the eye contact because that is a big thing. It, cool. Um, it, it demonstrates, it shows your confidence in what you're doing and the product and everything. And so as Joe noted last time, um, eye contact is something that guys typically struggle with because they don't have full confidence in the product. They don't know everything. So you kind of you fake it till you make it. But there are things that you can do that will help you improve your eye contact because they'll help you improve your knowledge of the product and they'll help you, like, obviously at the same time improve your confidence. So reading the sales manual, learning more about the bugs and the products that we use, learning more than in the sales manual. Last year I started looking up the products that we use by name to see if they were harmful or if they're not or what they do. And that helped me be very, very confident. Like, when customers would say, hey, aren't those products dangerous? If it, you know, they're actually not dangerous because of blah, 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 blah. And I could, it, it didn't, because if they say, aren't they dangerous? You'd be like, uh, not really. You know, and you don't want to go, eh, or you don't want to go, no. You want to keep staring at them, like, no, not, they're not. And here's why, because that helps you be very confident. Tyler. So, yeah. Sorry, so, okay, three things, especially for your experience reps. First year reps, focus exactly what ty on what Tyler's saying. But for your experience reps, Bryn and Tyson, Logan, Tyler, all you guys. Uh, I think three big things you can focus on to take you to the next level in regards to high, eye contact. You guys already know this for the paperwork, but when you're filling out the paperwork already with them, once you ask them to go get their credit card, if you look them in the eye, that is a big no-no. You look right down at your paper and you don't make eye contact on that because that's a very uh, awkward. awkward, awkward position to be in. Second thing, when you want to take someone around the house, so Timmy, if you want to take somebody around the house, if you tell them, oh yeah, just follow me, and you're still having eye contact with them, it's not going to happen. You just got to, yeah, just follow me. I'm, uh, let me show you this behind the house. And you start walking, and you start looking that way and describing as you go. They will follow you so easily. The ants go marching home, they will follow you just like that. They will follow right behind you. I guarantee it. And then the last thing, whenever you're d explaining the service, make sure your eye contact goes to that piece of the service. Because a lot of us, when we're explaining it, like Tyson, say you're explaining the eaves sweep on the, on the doors, you're like, a lot of times what we do is we, we scrub down the tops of the eaves, eaves and then they, they keep that eye contact and they don't watch you doing this or they don't look up into the eaves where you're pointing out these bugs where they have them everywhere. And so those are three main things, especially for your experience reps, that will take you to that next level too. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little role play really quick. I'm just gonna take a couple minutes. Um, what I want you guys to do is to partner up with something next to you and I want you to pitch the person next to you, just like your introduction. Um, maybe go like for seriously one minute. And I want your partner to count how many times you break eye contact unintentionally. You know, if you're directing them away from the service, that's fine. But I want the person that's listening to you to be paying attention to how to, to if you can keep your eye contact. And then we're gonna go ahead and switch. So you guys go ahead and partner up with somebody, and you each have one minute to pitch the other person, and then switch. <laughs> Stand up and go do your thing. Hey, Logan. Oh, I was in there.
All right. Actually, Tyson, you want to go with Josh? Yeah. Oh my God. Who needs the partner?